Today's message is for Israel. If you would turn in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8. I'm only going to read the first three words to begin with, and I want you to understand something, and we're going to get into it in detail. It says, but you, Israel. In the New Testament, the scriptures record that God like an olive tree called Israel, will prune out the unbelieving branches, which is of the lineage of Israel, and will graft in wild olive branches into the Israel tree of those from outside of the genealogical Jewish uh, lineage, which would be the Gentiles, and will graft them in to the Israel olive tree. And it says that God determines who is Israel. And when God opened the door to all of the Gentile world with the gospel and with grace, understand you now are called by the name Israel if you believe. It is not by blood, but by faith that you are Israel. Oh, I know there's the nation of Israel and we have uh, Jews that we call Israelites and that concept today. And there are many theologians that separate a covenant with the Jewish people going on today and a covenant with believers going on today. But the New Testament makes it very clear. Paul talks about it time and again. It is not about your lineage or your blood. It is about your faith. And your faith grafts you into the tree called Israel. So when the scriptures this morning speak to you, Israel, do not look back and say, oh, it is just for the Jews. This is a word to you. If you believe. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, descendant of Abraham, my friend, you whom I have taken from the ends of the earth. You see, even in the Old Testament, he's pulling you in. He's claiming you along with Abraham. You whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its remotest parts and said to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and not rejected you. You may say, well, I don't know that God has actually chosen me. I mean, it's not like God came and, and got me and dragged me along. I just heard somebody talking about, you know, Jesus, and I felt like I needed to, you know, maybe turn my life around, or I felt convicted and I needed to have forgiveness of my sin. Ah, there you go. You see, that is God coming after you. That is God seeking you out. That is God's spirit convicting you or calling you that you need salvation. None of us were ever saved without the Holy Spirit being involved, without the Holy Spirit seeking us, calling us. And let me tell you that the world is full of people who God has convicted, God has called, God has seen to it that they have seen the light and they reject it. 
That's right. Tell them. Shame on them. <laughs> you see, God is in the process every day of trying to reach out to people. And time after time, when that candle is lit before them and the light is shining, they blow it out. They say, I want nothing to do with it. They extinguish the light in their life. But not you. You have chosen to follow. You have chosen to carry the light. You have chosen to go out into a darkened world. And you know what that makes you? Oftentimes it makes you a target. It makes you someone that others will jeer at or make fun of or complain about or will get frustrated with because their sin and their conviction and their sorrow or guilt is not pleasant. Who are they going to blame? Why, surely not themselves. They will blame us. And so things will become difficult if you take your light out into the world this next year. If you go out there and you, as you are going, make disciples or attempt to, people will be frustrated. People will be angry. People will be resentful. People will hate you. You say, Eric, how do you know that? Because the Bible says they will. Jesus Christ is the greatest stumbling block for people who want to live for themselves only. Why? Because they need Jesus. They can't have salvation without Jesus. But they don't want anything to do with Jesus. They don't want to be have a life that's controlled by being obedient to Jesus. But that's not the case with you. You have chosen to walk in the light, to live with the light, to glorify the light. And so as the scripture shares for the servants of God, it says, you, verse 9, whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its remotest parts and said to you, you are my servants. I have chosen you and not rejected you. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not fear, for I am with you. All right. I need the kids back up here. I need all the kids back. No, but right here on the front rows. What you need, sir? <clears throat> all the kids back up here on the front rows. Okay. All the kids right here on the front row. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through something. I need you to to follow the actions that I am getting ready to show you. Okay. That scripture I just read says you don't have to fear. God is with you. Okay, I'm going to take you to another scripture in the New Testament. And this is what it says. What is that? For, for, for God, oh God has not, has not given, you given you the spirit, the spirit of, fear, of fear, but of power, of power and of love. And of love. And a sound, sound mind. Okay, you got that down? No. Okay, we're going through it once, and then you're going to tell it to them. You ready? For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound, sound mind. Okay, now, you just learned that. I'm going to have you tell that to them so they can learn it. So come up here, face me, right here and face me. 
please. That is excellent. Can you join us? You don't have to if you don't want to. That's okay. Okay. Ready? And you say it aloud. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and sound mind. Very good. If you all will take out your Bibles, thank you very much. Turn to 2 Timothy 1 7. 2 Timothy 1 7. See how accurate they were. 2 Timothy, that's right after 1 Timothy, by the way. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. <clears throat> chapter 1. Verse 7. Second Timothy. Okay. Verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love, and it says discipline or a sound mind will be in some of your versions. We are not to fear. No matter what 2021 holds, we are not to fear. God didn't tell us that there was something out there that we had to be afraid of. We are to be in awe and fear of God, but when he's on our side, we have nothing to fear. And God didn't give us the spirit of fear. Ooh, what will our government do? Ooh, who will be president? Ooh, what about COVID? Ooh, what about my neighbor? Ooh, what about anything else? Folks, God gave us a spirit of power and love and a sound, sound mind based on the scripture. See, that's the soundest truth we can find is the Holy Scripture. And if we go relying on what the world says and on what people say, folks, you need to be afraid. Because there's a lot of falsehood. There's a lot of deception. There's a lot of misleading. Because this world is not about truth. And this world is about creating fear. Do y'all know what Satan's greatest tool is? Fear. Fear. He sets about, he's the father of lies. He sets about creating lies that bring about fear into your life. As we enter 2021, do not fear. Trust in God. Seek his power to live. How do you live? You live with hope. You live with love. You live with joy and you live with peace. All of those elements brought through your life into the lives of others that people might see Jesus in you. Jesus was the hope of the world. Jesus loved us so much that he gave his life. Jesus gave his life on the cross for the joy set before him, which was you. Putting your trust in him. And Jesus is the Prince of Peace. That absolves the conflict that we as humans have with God. Do not fear what the world has in store out there. For there is nothing this world can do that God cannot undo. There is nothing this world can do that God cannot circumvent. There is nothing this world can do to cause you to stumble that God cannot smooth the road before you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your paths straight. Do not fear. 
For that is the devil's territory where he wraps you up and he causes you to be hamstrung and unable to function. Do not fear, for I am with you. This is verse 10. Do not anxiously look around you, for I am your God. Don't look for trouble. Don't look around and say, oh no, where's the next crisis coming from? Don't look around you and say, oh, what things might come my way and cause yourself to stumble. If you're looking around and not looking at where you're supposed to be going, you have a problem. I'm, <clears throat> I'm at this intersection, right? This was a few years ago. I'm sitting in my car. And I see this big truck coming. Big truck coming. And it's like a four-way stop, okay? Big truck's coming. And it slowly comes to a stop. And I glance over and I see this van right behind it. And this van is not slowing down. And I'm thinking, this is going to be bad. And as the truck comes to a stop, the van just, boom, takes off for the ditch. Doesn't slow down at all. Takes off for the ditch and wham, runs into the biggest telephone pole I've ever seen. I mean, this sucker was huge. And the truck just pulls off. And I get out of my car and I run across the street to the ditch and there's a young girl in the car and the airbags have gone off and the car is destroyed and, and I, I say, are you hurt? And she says, no, I'm fine and my phone's okay. I said, were you on your phone? She says, well, yeah, and I didn't see the truck until it was too late so I took to the ditch. I said, but you're okay. She says, yeah, my grandma's not going to be very happy. This was her car. She was on her phone, a little bit distracted. Didn't see where she was going. Didn't pay attention to what was right in front of her. Folks, if we're looking off to the right or to the left, if we're worried about what's coming all around us and we're not focused on Jesus Christ, we're going to find ourselves in a ditch. We're going to find ourselves in a crash or a calamity. We're going to find ourselves stumbling over our own feet. You ever seen that person that's walking along the sidewalk and they hit a crack in the sidewalk? And what do they do? They turn around like, oh, what, what was that? Well, what it was was you weren't paying attention. And sometimes that's funny. That's funny. I was walking through uh, uh, a shopping area, and I was just talking. I see, I, I ought to be listening to what I'm saying myself. I was just talking mm -hmm. to Tracy, and it was a couple of Christmases ago, and I, I didn't pay any attention. The curb was there, and I just stepped down and rolled right out into the street. She thought it was hilarious. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, all I. This, all the stuff he had in his pocket was flying out of his pocket. I mean, it was funny. It was funny. <laughs> it was funny, she says. <laughs> Let me tell you when you're the one stumbling or you're the one falling, it's not funny at the time. In fact, it can get pretty rough. You know, if, if you're not paying attention, if you're not focusing on what you need to be doing, if you don't know the road ahead of you, if you're not prepared, life can get rough. And you can look for somebody to blame it on. I blamed it on the curb. <laughs> Wasn't my fault, right? It was your fault. It was my fault. You weren't watching out. Yeah, I wasn't watching out. Very good. Let me give you another story of not watching out. And this is for all you young kids who just get a bike. Okay, and I blame this one on mom and dad. They got me a bike. Okay, it's it's the it's the first bike I ever got with handle brakes. Okay, you know, as a kid, some of you some of you people uh, have always had these these fancy bikes with the hand brakes. But back in the day, we had these bikes where you just pedal backwards and you 
put it to a stop and you could slide and do everything. Well, they got me a fancy five-speed bike with hand brakes. Oh, that's bold. And man, I was coming down our road and I thought, man, I'm flying. And then I needed to slow down in front of our house. And I made the mistake because I didn't understand. I only pulled one brake. And it was the front brake. Now, calculating the angular momentum of uh, speed and descent, I stopped the front wheel, but I kept going this way. And the back <laughs> wheel kept coming up, and I flew over the handlebars. And I experienced road rash all down my face because I got to meet the pavement. Now, you see, I didn't think this thing through. I just got on it and I just went. Folks, we may think that we can just take our life and go great guns and not have to worry about the rules and the regulations and the uh, principles of how to live life. But God's given them all there to us in his word. And if we don't read them, if we don't study them, if we don't understand them, and if we don't apply them, guess what? We're heading for road rash. A little spiritual crash here and there. It's a little rough. And I'm telling you, it is up to us to focus on who God is in our life, who God intends for us to be, and being obedient to his word. Because if we will not do it, we're going to find that that <clears throat> hope, that love, that joy, and that peace may seem like a far off light rather than one that is right here and guides our life. See, when you take off away from Jesus and his calling and his plan for you and you do your own thing, you push the light back. You quench the Holy Spirit. You let God's glory be pushed away from you and you once again walk in areas of darkness places that you should not go things you should not do and God says do not fear you have nothing to fear if you are with me if you are serving me if you are doing what God wants you to do because he's got your back and he's got your front and he's got your future and he's got your past. You see, God is all in all and you have nothing to fear. The scripture says, I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. As sure as the sun rises every morning, the very righteous hand of God in his word, in his promise, in his follow through will be there for you. Don't slap his hand away when he tries to help you up out of your self-made pit. Don't tell him you don't need him and that you're going to do this yourself. Because you're going to end up right back in your self-made pit. God says, I will be there with you and walk with you. All we have to do is keep our eyes on him. Keep focused on doing what he commands us to do. Folks, God didn't make the plan hard. It's not hard because it's technical. It's not hard because, you know, God make it, made it intricate or with some pitfalls. It's a very easy plan. It's only hard because we don't want to do it. I have dominion. I'm in control of my life. I want to do what I want to do. 
Folks, when we have that attitude, there's no room for God. We choose to be our own God. We have to humble ourselves. I had a, <clears throat> another pastor text me this week, and he said, he said, Eric, I'm praying for revival in individuals' lives. I'm not, not praying for worldwide revival anymore. I'm praying for revival in individuals' lives. And he said, what do you think is the best way, the best way for that to take place? And I said, well, the best way that that could take place is we need to pray for humility and a heart to be obedient. Those two things. When, when the Bible talks about David having a heart after God, that was just simply a heart to be obedient. And before the heart that wants to be obedient can come into play, you've got to humble yourself and stop thinking you're God and you're in control of your life and let God be God. So you humble yourself and then you have a heart to be obedient. And if you've got those two things, let me tell you, you can walk with God. 2021 is coming. Don't make some rash crazy New Year's resolution about uh, smoking or drinking or cussing or, or walking or exercising or eating or not eating or whatever you're doing. None of that. In our hearts, let's just make a commitment that we will not fear what this world has and that we will humble ourselves and have a heart of obedience. May that be our New Year's resolution. In Jesus' name. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for all that you have done in the world around us for our sakes and for the sake of others who need to know you. Lord, I pray in the midst of the whole world going crazy around us that we would be focused. That we would be your light to a world that walks in darkness. I pray that you would help us in this year to come to not stumble, but to focus and to keep heading forward and to keep doing what you have called and created us for to do. And Lord, may your name be glorified in each of our lives, in the life of this church, and throughout this community. In Jesus' name, may it be so. Amen. Our hymn of invitation, number... I know we've done it several times, but we're going to do it again. 437. 437. <clears throat> 437. As we stand and sing, trust and obey. 437.